Hi, this is Julie Lubinsky. I am the web manager for the Christopher and Dana Reeves Foundation. I'd like to wish you all a happy new year. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Dan, Dr. Dan. He's a practicing psychologist and family therapist since 1969. He's been living with SCI since 1979. He is a regular in the Reeves Foundation online paralysis community, posting and answering your questions with his Dr. Dan on well-being discussion. So please feel free to join us online as well after and in between these monthly live chats with Dr. Dan that we're so lucky to have him do once a month for us. Um, so well, I'll bring in Dan. Hi, Dan. Hey, Julie. How are you today? I am doing very well. It's, uh, it's beautiful here on the East Coast. Yes, it is. It's very pretty. Uh, so I put up this poll, Julie, about just yes or no. I make New Year's resolutions. So it splits 50-50. You know what that means. You're the tiebreaker. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say no. You don't? Yeah. Did you ever? Yeah. And why did you stop? I never follow up with them. <laughs> so I've got um, I've got fifty fifty here, and uh, um, wait a sec. I want to put up another poll here um, about New Year's resolution. So, you know, I wrote on, on um, you know, the, the, in my chat room that we originally did these, you know, Babylonian era to please the gods. You know, we'll return the, uh, the uh, lawnmower or, <laughs> or whatever facsimile in Babylonian times. You know, we'll pay, or we'll pay back debts. In, in order to make the gods happy. Um, I guess now we do it, you know, to uh, make our critical judge happy, I, you know? But we do it, and every year hope springs eternal. You know, this is the year I'm going to uh, clean my closets, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, I'm going to, you know, whatever. And um, it rarely happens. Um, you know, the, the, this next poll um, tends to be leaning towards I sometimes succeed or I usually fail, but I try again. That's the way it's looking. Um, so that's what we do. You know, we want to make ourselves better, um, look better, act better, um, feel better about clean closets. Um, and, and we all do it, Julie, even if it's not New Year's. You know, you don't tell me you don't do this. You know, make a resolution to whatever, self-improvement there it is. Do you? Yeah, of course. And I mean, do I don't make resolutions, but I mean, I always, I don't think it has to be a certain time. I mean, I kind of always have that in the back of my head. Um, there's a quote, Julie. I, I I can't remember who the quote was. Um, I'll look it up. If, uh, if anybody wants to know, I'll look it up and get back to them after the web chat. But the quote goes something like this. Um, I was neurotic, and for years I suffered, and people told me I should get help, but I refused. And then they continued, and I suffered more, and they continued to tell me I should get help, I must get help, and still I refused. And then one day, somebody came to me and put their arm around me and said, you're fine the way you are. Don't change. Don't change. And he said, went on to say, 
and I relaxed, and I breathed deeply, and I changed. So that's what we do to ourselves, you know? We demand that we do better, be better, look better, act better, as though there's something wrong with us. It's kind of heartbreaking, you know? It's kind of heartbreaking. Um, and Julie? Yes. Um, you know, I could go on with this monologue a bit, but um, I want to ask everybody, you know, who's, who's listening, who's online, to, uh, you know, like I said in my chat, think about, you know, why, why you join us. And, you know, chime in with your thoughts, your questions, issues you struggle with. I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, New Year's resolutions related. It just has to be what's really important to you. Right, so um, users can do this two ways. They can, you know, love to hear uh, about your resolutions or, or anything in the chat box. Just type in the chat box. Or if you're dialed in or you can dial in and just press star 1 on your phone and um, we will put you through. Does, um, is anybody on the phone when I call in? Star 1. There are currently no audio questions at this time. Okay, thank you, Ronnie. All right, so, um, so you don't have any questions. I guess I'll supply answers. So um, I was talking to Lee about this critical judge that you know we pay homage to. You know the judge that says you must do that, you shouldn't do that. You'll offend somebody if you do that, or people won't like you if that, or people judge you because they think you're not good enough. Um, crap, I hope I'm not the only one that that uh, happens to. Um, but I, I, I think it's pretty universal. You, Julie, that happened to you? Sometimes. Yeah. You beat yourself up sometimes? Yeah. Um, no, the, the, it said the Dalai Lama, when, uh, when he first came over here, Julie, when, when he was leaving, he said, um, people over there don't seem to like themselves very much. He said, I don't understand how they cannot like themselves when they're born with a Buddha nature, with a, you know, with this, this little um, piece of goodness and perfection inside of them. And, and most religions have, have a similar belief that we're born with a piece of uh, the divine inside of us. I, you know, Julia, I, that's why I wrote my um, last book, you know, the wisdom we're born with, because that's that's what it addresses this this goodness and purity that uh, that we're born with, this innocence. Um, we're born with compassion and and a desire to to do good and be good um, and love. You know, babies love fearlessly. You know, they don't give a damn whether whether they're going to get hurt or not. You know, they just love, and they invite love. You know, that's, that's in us. You know, it goes away. It goes away pretty easily, but, you know, it usually goes away these days um, by elementary school. Kids are beating themselves. Um, so, um, by the way, Julie, are you there? Uh, I am here. There's a poll. Is we still have zero people saying they succeed. 
in resolutions. Um, and the majority says sometimes, and uh, a minority says, I usually fail, but I try again. So, oh, wrong poll. Never mind. Um, oh boy. Jewel? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Guru. How do I get that poll out of there? I Mark am going three. to delete that poll. And did you create a third one? I did. Okay. I did. Let's see. Um, let me see. Um, I make millions of resolutions. Um, okay. I think this is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's your poll. It's going to be up soon, folks. Hang on. Do you want me to double click on it? There you go. There you go. go. Okay. Great. If everybody could answer this poll. Yeah, see, that's more interesting <laughs> and more telling. So, um, what happens, Julie, is. Um, when we do these things to try to improve ourselves and, and criticize ourselves, what that does to our awareness is it makes our awareness narrowly focused on ourselves. So you drop in on somebody's mind, anybody's, any human's mind, and you'll find yourself in the middle of an elaborate story in which we are the most important figure in that story. It's 95% of the time, it's always about us. And, and what we know is that um, when we get self-absorbed, focusing narrowly on ourselves, we tend to be miserable. Um, my meditation teacher said that uh, the mind is a, uh, is a terrible thing to have. He, he said, we all have neighborhoods in our mind that are so dangerous we should never go there alone. Which, uh, I, I know that's true for me. Um, so, this is what happens. You know, we focus narrowly on ourselves. Uh, when we judge ourselves, it's very rarely in a positive way. And, and what we found was, what we know, and I'll tell you what just, just happened um, to me. I've got a, uh, a patient of mine, the um, angry guy, and he just got diagnosed with um, cancer with a uh, questionable prognosis, I guess like all cancer. And angry guy, he's kind of a blustery angry guy. And he's just wailing here at, at the injustice, wailing at, at the lack of treatments, wailing at the medical care. And, um, you know, we know that anger is not good for the immune system. But his anger, you know, is, he's raging at the injustice. It's understandable, but it's not good for the immune system. So I told him a few weeks ago, you're not happy with the medical care? You're not happy with coordination? You're not happy with the research that, or lack of research that goes in to your particular kind of cancer. I said, fix it. Do something about it. And over these weeks, he did. I mean, he, he you know, looked for people in, in the research field that um, he got interested in. He's now looking around for grants to do some of this research. 
And guess what happened to his anger? You know, it went away. And now he looks forward to waking up every day. So, you see where the focus shifts. You know, from inside to outside. Um, and that's about New Year's resolutions. You know? Um, because most of them are focused inside. Um, see here. My point. So, um, they are about self-improvement. That's, you know, historically, that's what they're about, is self-improvement. But, you know, we, like we learned um, in the previous poll, you know, they are rarely successful. So, Julie? Yes. Um, any thoughts about what we can do to uh, stop me from this monologue? Because I guarantee it's <laughs> going to get less interesting. Well, I can do my begging pitch for people to ask a question in the chat box or even let us know, those that answer the poll, let us know what your resolutions were about self-improvement so we can um, talk about those or if anybody has any um, oh, great idea. You know, tips on maybe something they succeeded on, that would be great too. Or like you were saying, you redirected, you know, redirecting your anger or something like that to help you succeed. Um, I'd love to hear from people. And again, if you want to, you can type in the chat box or you can call in. We'd love to hear your voice. So um, Ronnie, is there anybody on the call? No, there are no audio questions. All right, thank you. I would love to hear for those who um, made resolutions. I would love to hear what they are. Or love to hear, you know, about your critical drive, what you feel you need to change in order to be okay or unrelated, you know. <laughs> or just give something that Dan can talk about. <laughs> Really, really, really. Um, so I got a doctor unrelated to this, Julie. I got a doctor's appointment Monday with a pain doctor who uh, specializes in medical marijuana. So we shall see. Um, you know, I hope it doesn't do to me what it did in college, you know. Because, <laughs> you know, then I'll wind up listening to Jimi Hendrix records and uh, eat a box of saltines, which wouldn't be good. Well, it might be. But it's but, good that you are looking for, that you're open to options for managing your pain. I am. I am. And you know what's got me interested here is the more I read, the more I read about its efficacy for anxiety, depression, PTSD. And that's what's got me the most interested. You know, so I'll keep... Uh, I'll keep you posted there. Yeah, options. I'm, op I'm open to options. Um, and you know, the truth of the matter is, is, is what I've said before, Julie. Um, you know, I can manage my pain. You know, I don't think my medication's been affected um, all that much. But um, I mean, I can, I can live with it because I've learned well, through my practice that pain is pain. And um, there's a difference between pain and suffering. And when my pain is particularly bad, like it is today, um, I feel pain. It sucks. But I don't suffer. There's no stories around that. You know? Um, 
that makes it easier to live with, you know, without the stories. And we all have our stories about who we are and what everything means, you know, and they're fairly accurate. Um, so I'll keep you posted. It's uh, medical marijuana is legal in Jersey, where I happen to reside. So we'll see. I'm looking forward to more than anything. I'm looking forward to the education. Um, so for some reason, the pain is worse today. Who knows? Who knows? Um, Julie? Yes. Obviously, I'm running low on things to talk about. And we've got people, they're hanging out and listening. But they're not very chatty today. Come on, guys. Help us out. We're here for you. So please let us know, again, what maybe your resolution is on your self-improvement. Um, or you know, type in a question, or please feel free to call in. Julie, many years ago, I gave a talk at uh, a Quaker meeting, and you know, so it's the end of the talk, and you know, I, I always leave 20, 30 minutes for Q and A, because that's usually the best part of the talk, you know. So I finish my talk, and I say, um, okay, any questions? Dead silence. So I go, okay, I'll wait a couple minutes. And a couple minutes come and go, and I am dying up there. There's got to be 150, 200 people in the room, and I am dying. So finally, I say to the audience, this is five minutes, which is like an eternity now, you know? So I say to the audience, anybody want to rescue me here? Somebody, somebody stands up and says, uh, Dr. Gottlieb, he says, we're Quakers. We don't do anything until we meditate on it for a while. I said, okay, I can live with that. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, my friends who have joined the uh, web chat, um, I can only guess you're, uh, you're meditating. Julie, I got a technical question. Sure. What's it mean when I see uh, one of our people join the conversation as a cell phone? Um, more than likely, they um, are like listen-only mode, which means they're they can type in a question in the chat box, but um, are unable to speak. But I'm going to ask so, again if someone yeah. can <laughs> just, um, yeah. even if we change the topic, just throw a topic in there in the chat box. Help us out, guys. Here's the other thing I wanted to, um, to do today, and, and maybe you could do it sure. with me for me. When you look back at 2016, can you describe what the year was like for you? I'm meditating on the answer. <laughs> um, I, I mean, immediately I can say it was not um, a failure or it wasn't unsuccessful. Um, like it was, a, it was a good year. It was nothing is standing out that made it a bad year, which, you know, most things do if, if something bad happens, it usually defines your year. Um, and, and sometimes, depending on what other years you've had, that can be a good thing if it was um, an uneventful year. Well, 
my year has been the opposite. It's, um, here's one way I could describe it. Um, my daughter had difficulties this year that were concerning to me. Um, my health, I had a really bad year with my health. Um, and I feel like I turned the page. Um, I made some bad decisions around selling my house and getting a new one. Well, actually, the bad decision was actually to sell my house and get a new one, especially with my health, um, you know, not being good. And, and this is a house that it's a big, beautiful house that was built for me with the proceeds of a, a lawsuit 35 years ago. Um, so, you know, it wasn't good judgment to do that in the face of my failing health. Um, so, you know, when I continue with, uh, with health problems. So, um, that was my year, 2016. On the other hand, my year 2016, I spent it with a, a woman I love dearly who loves me. Um, it's the best relationship either one of us have ever had. Um, I got even closer to her daughters and her family. And, uh, I got to watch them. They're, they're in their 20s watch them grow their career. Um, and it's, it's just beautiful to watch. Um, my, I watch my other daughter um, just soar in, in her career as a uh, um, highly credentialed veterinary nurse who lectures around the world. Um, And, you know, my other daughter who struggles, I've sat in awe of her courage um, to get through this. I've um, enjoyed um, a summer, uh, much of which was at the shore. I enjoyed a wonderful driving vacation with Joan up, uh, you know, up in, in New England. Um, so I could describe my year that way. And the way we describe our years is, um, is how we feel about them. Because both of my descriptions are accurate. They're accurate. Um, so it's how we describe our lives that really dictate how we feel about our lives, not the other way around. I mean, sure, if we're basically happy people, we're going to describe our 2016 in a positive way. And if we're, you know, we tend to be more pessimistic, we're going to describe it in, in the more negative way. Um, but we can change it. We can change our view of our year and even our lives by the way we describe it by the way we experience it moment by moment. Um, so um, anyway, um, Susan, thank you, Susan. Um, Susan just logged in to listen. Um, and one person, one note, they were doing something wrong. Um, I guess because of maybe we're putting pressure on you guys, and well, not maybe, I guess we were. No, um, no, uh, I mean, what you're, what you're hearing is a, uh, you know, a mental health professional that is um, feels, feeling a lot of stress 
and, and feeling lonely in, in this web chat. So I nag people to join me. Um, that's that's what you're hearing. But, uh, you know, um, all of you would love to hear, um, you know, what you have to say about about anything that's important to you. Um, so, Julie? Yes. We've talked about gratitude, you know, and, um, you know, I was talking about how we tell our life story. You know, I taught a course with a, uh, a dear friend of mine, a poet, author, um, on autobiography writing. And, you know, I start off my lecture the, the same thing, the same way I started off just now, talking about 2016. You know, I talk about, you know, security, the learning disability, school failure, you know, the, the uh, abuse, flunking out of college, um, you know, oh, yeah, and that little accident I had. Right you know, so I tell that story. But I said, that's not the story of my life. That's a story of my life. And we get confused. We think, you know, a story becomes the story. You know, and especially for us, those that live with disability or love people with disability, it becomes disability is the central part of our life. Disability becomes who we are and not what we have. You know, I, I wrote about that when I wrote Letters to Sam. Um, my grandson was born on the autism spectrum. And, um, you know, I wrote in one of my uh, letters to Sam, I wrote um, how I fear the day somebody's going to call him autistic. And I said, you are not autistic. Autism is what you have. Any more than I am a quadriplegic. Quadriplegia is what I have. It's not who I am. Even being a psychologist is not who I am. A boyfriend, a father, um, you know, it's not who I am. Who I am starts with my heart and my experience. You know, who I am right now feels grateful and uh, and stressed at the same time. My uh, stress hasn't been reduced. Um, but, you know, we look at ourselves through a narrow lens. And we miss so much of our lives. You know, people say I am a caregiver. Years ago, I got a call from someone who described himself as an MS patient. I, you know, I asked him, is he in the hospital? Is he currently under active treatment? You know, he's not a patient. He's a person with MS. So, um, you know, it kind of breaks my heart when uh, we define ourselves based on our disability or based on any one small thing. You know, it's just, it's not who we are. It's not who we are. So, Julie? Yes. Here's what I'm thinking. If um, nobody has anything to say, I'm thinking this. You know, we made jokes about meditation. So I think I'm, I'm, those who care to, I think I, I'm going to take uh, 10 minutes here and introduce you to uh, mindfulness meditation. What do you think? I personally would enjoy that because I think it's a good way to start the new year to help um, refocus. Okay. All right. Um, before we 
do. Right, Susan did um, uh, have have wrote in the chat box if you want to look at what Susan wrote. Um, uh, she um, she fell a year and a half ago. She's an incomplete para. Um, wasn't expected to survive. So um, so my home is in a different county we sold and now living in a totally different environment and want to move back but unsure um, with that word um, unsure uh, I'll tell you what um, let's do this um, hold on to that word unsure and I'm going to ask you to hold that word and identify it in your body. Because all of these emotions are bodily experiences. We feel them somewhere in our body. Because there's a dance between our body and our mind. But all emotions are born in our bodies. So hold on to that experience, unsure. And we're going to do this for 10 minutes, Susan, and then, and then let's see. Let's see what happens and what happens to that word, that experience, I'm sure, and the same with everybody else. Okay. Um, all right. So let's do this, everybody. Get yourself in a comfortable position. If you're sitting in a wheelchair, do your best to sit as erect as you can. If you have any strain on your body, just balanced best you can. If you're not in a wheelchair, sit in a chair with your, your back erect, feet on the floor. And if you're able to, you can rest your palms on your thighs, either face down or face up. And just feel yourself in your body best you can. Just let yourself inhabit your body, however you experience it, all of it parts that work and don't work, the parts that feel pain, the parts that are comfortable. Just fully inhabit your body. Feel what it's like to live inside your skin. And whenever you're ready, you can close your eyes. And we'll begin. Let's start by taking three deep breaths. Deep as you can. Take it in. Hold it for a second. And let it go. And feel your body as you consciously let go. Feel your body relax. Again. You do. And let it go. Feel your body settle in with each exhalation. Again. Okay. Now, breathe regularly as your body settles in. And just feel the normal, quiet rhythm of your breath going in and out. See if you can bring all of your attention to that breath going in and out. Notice where you feel the in-breath. 
in your nostrils, in your chest, in your belly, in the out breath. Just take a few minutes and pay attention to your breath. And you'll notice how your mind wanders away. It's okay. That's what minds do. Gently, even lovingly, bring your mind back to your awareness of what's happening right now. So let's monitor the breath and be aware of when your mind wanders and gently bring it back. And when your mind wanders, bring it back to the gentle rocking of your body as you breathe. See if you can be aware of the silence and stillness deep inside as your body shifts with each in-breath and each out, noticing the stillness. So whatever thoughts or emotion you might have, just notice it. Name it, if it helps. Thinking or feeling, and then gently come back to your head. And you'll notice how, with each breath, everything changes. Thoughts come and go. Emotions come and go. And the only thing stable is the breath. And you might hear a distraction in the background. Just 
just notice and come back to the breath, to the body, to the sun. And as we come to the end of this meditation, see if you can maintain this awareness as you slowly open your eyes and begin to take in other input from the environment. And to the extent that you can, you know, you can move your body, just get in touch with your body again. So, um, I would love to hear how that was for you. Um, Susan, I want to hear about that unsure emotion that you talked about. Um, where did it go? What happened? But I'd love to hear from you about what it was like. Um, so, Julie? I think I yes. Julie. Um, what was that like for you? Were you able to do it? Or were you distracted? I was very distracted. <laughs> But I will. I'm actually going to um, listen back tonight, or at least try it tonight before I go to bed, because I think it'll help me um, I've get some, some rest. Um, meditations on my web page also. Oh, that's great. And your website is drdangottlieb.com. Dan 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 All one word. I'll type it in the chat box. So, um, yeah, thanks, Joe. Sure. So I'd love to hear from my friends about the experience. Um, I don't want to hear any explosive issues as we wind this down. You know, we, we therapists all have had the experience of, um, of uh, you know, a patient, just two minutes left in the session, and they're saying, oh, oh by the way, I forgot to tell you, um, I just slept with my dog, or something explosive like that, you know? <laughs> and you go, oh, oh, nice. Two minutes left. Um, so um, anyway, um, Susan, how can you chat with me? Um, wait, I mean, we could either do it this way through um, one healing, the one healing discussion group, or um, you know, you can uh, go to my web page and email me. Um, whichever way is, is more comfortable for you. Um, yeah, just look on my web page, Susan, and, uh, and you'll find me. Or, you know, or in healing, or both. Um, I'd, uh, I'd love to hear from you. And, and if it's not too personal, it would be great if you also told your story in the uh, on healing um, discussion group, just so we can all get to know you better and uh, see who might have ways of helping you and resources that could help you. But either way, I look forward to hearing from you. 
Um, and I appreciate your uh, your chiming in in this uh, you know in our in our chat room. So Julie, any thoughts? Thank you. Um, I know Susan's trying to chat. I think Susan, if you if you can join us next month and call in. Um, uh, with the phone number that's provided in the conference. Um, I think that might work better than a mobile device, which I'm unsure how to for you to um, talk to us. Um, but I really, uh, back to our meeting, I really am glad that you went through that mindfulness meditation. I think it's important um, all the time, but I think it's a good way to start off the new year to, so that you, even any time that you're so discouraged or something is to kind of refocus. Yeah. Yeah, and kind of settle into uh, what's really happening rather than the stories we tell ourselves. So, um, I don't know. Uh, Everybody, um, you know, if you don't want to weigh in or don't have anything in particular to say, um, Julie, what do you think about closing a couple minutes? Later? Yeah, um, definitely. And I think it's good for everybody to know that they can go to chrisfruit.org slash Dr. Dan, and that's where um, your part of the our online community is, and they can also leave questions there. And also um, find out what's coming up for next month's web chat, and hopefully um, we'll get more people to chime in, and we can have a productive discussion. Good. So, right. um, yeah, on that note, I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and Dr. Dan, especially for you as well, um, to keep us going for this hour and to help us through some mindfulness meditation. Okay, well, glad to do it. I wish, I wish everybody great love and happiness in this year and the next one and the next. Great. Thank you, everybody, for hanging in there and hope to chat with you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, bye. bye. Okay, bye.